Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, I get asked a lot through the Twitters, through the YouTubes, through the Facebooks about how you own an electric car, how much they cost to buy, what the depreciation is, what they're going to be worth in five years' time, how do you get hold of one? Now, I am not, without any question, a professional in this area. You do need to consult proper, skilled, fully informed professionals. But what I'm going to do today is give you a rough idea of the various choices that are open to you so that you can be the proud possessor of an electric vehicle. So as you can see from this display, there's an increasing number of electric cars that are available to you. That's an electric van. All right, it's an electric minibus, but you know, there's lots of them. All sorts of different variations, plug-in hybrids, pure electrics, all that sort of stuff. But the question is, how do you get hold of one? Do you buy one? Because if you buy something like this, it doesn't matter what sort of car it is. Cars are expensive things. It's a lot of money. It's the second biggest purchase you're ever going to make other than a house. And when you buy a house, you've got a fairly good idea that's going to probably be worth more when you move out of it than it is when you move into it. Cars are not the same. They generally lose a lot of their value as you use them. So they're kind of on this weird, cuspy area. And one of the problems I've been asked a lot is, oh, well, electric cars are so much more expensive and all those things. And my argument is, yes, they are more expensive to buy, but they're much, more expen much cheaper to run, which is true, they are. But it's still a complicated decision. So obviously, some people uh, could just afford to go out and buy one of these cars for cash. I mean, a lot of my mates who live in the overprivileged celebrity hyper bubble of liberal intolerance, they can just go and buy them for money, just dirty old money. They've got loads of it. But normal people would probably take out a bank loan or they'd buy it on higher purchase and all those sort of things and it's a big problem because then is it going to be worth anything after you've had it for five years or ten years or three years you know what those are complicated things and there are ways around this so there's two types of leases I, I uh, lease my car it's on a it's on a now it's on a, a business contract hire so I rent I lease my car through my business and you can also do a personal contract hire as, a, as an individual you don't have to have a business to do it and then the, but the other type is a contract purchase lease and that is, you, you lease the car the same as I do, but at the end, you have the option to pay a lump sum to buy the vehicle if you want to keep it. But that price that, you will, that you'll pay at the end of it is pre-arranged when you first start it, so you know exactly how much it is. It's not going to go up or go down. It's going to stay at this one thing, so you arrange that lease right at the start. And that's apparently a very popular way of doing it. In fact, leasing cars has become incredibly popular, not just electric cars, all cars. There's been a 44% increase in the number of cars leased in this country in the last year. It's the, it's the way everyone's getting cars because they're big, expensive, complicated machines. And they cost, you know, it's a lot of money to buy a car. So um, I'm going to go through some of the prices of how, how much you have to pay to, to buy a car and to lease one. So this BMW 225e, the list price for this, the list price, which isn't exactly what you would pay if you went into a BMW showroom, but it is the advisory price, is £32,600 to buy this car. It's a lot of money, but you can lease it for £390 a month. I'll be more precise, £390, 47p a month. And that this is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It can do 20, 25 miles on one charge before you, the, the engine kicks. It's one of those. It's got four-wheel drive. It's quite amazing. We're going to be reviewing it soon on Fully Charged. So that's how much you'd pay a month. It's still quite a lot of money, but it's a real high-end, classy motor. Now, this is the Outlander, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Amazing car, very, very economic to drive if you're careful and sensible. Rapid charging capability, four-wheel drive, really roomy inside. That costs £38,899. That's the list price, but you can lease this car for £365 a month. Now, this is the truly brilliant BMW i3. I love this car. If you were to buy this car in the garage, it would cost you £32,789, but you can drive it uh, on a lease for £245 a month. What's important to remember with this as well is that the additional cost of fuel on top of that is minuscule. It's literally like 10, 12 quid a month. That's all you're going to pay for fuel. Whereas if it was a petrol car, it would be a lot more. And this, of course, is the fabulous and iconic BMW i8. And if you were to go into a BMW showroom to buy this, it would cost you £99,773. But you can lease it if you want a very, very small, very, very difficult to get your bags in two-seater sports car that looks fabulous, is amazing to drive and is amazing fun, but is not the most practical car on the road, it will cost you £1,406 a month to lease it. 
plus an £8,446 initial payment. So that's at the higher end of the market. Now this is the Kia Soul EV, a brilliant, practical, sensible electric car. Lots and lots of room inside, really nice to drive, really easy to drive. Uh, the list price for this car is £29,940. That's the list price, what you're advised to pay in the showroom, you may get it for less. But you can lease it for £225 a month, plus a £1,300 initial down payment. And one of the important things to remember with leases is there is usually a mileage limit. So it's, it's usually between 10 and 15,000 miles a year is part of your lease deal. And uh, so for that, so that uh, quotation I've just given you there, 225 pounds a month is for 10,000 miles a year, which is actually quite a lot of driving. So this one obviously is the uh, very iconic Tesla Model S 70D. And if you were to go into the uh, Tesla showroom for this, it would cost you £61,100 to buy outright. But you can lease this car. Uh, this one, you can do a lease for up to four years and up to 40,000 miles, and you pay £848 a month, plus an initial 5088 deposit. So this is a really flash, posh, amazing, state-of-the-art piece of high-tech car, which you can get for... £848 a month, basically. It's a lot of money, but it's not the same as buying it outright. And then when you, the lease is over, this is the important thing, it's no longer your car, but it's also no longer your responsibility. You haven't got to sell it, you haven't got to find out how much it's worth, it's not a problem. Oh, it's so complicated. Now this BMW beauty is the BMW 330e PHEV plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and this would cost you £34,180 to buy in the showroom but it costs £380 a month to lease it. Apparently this is an amazing car, I'm going to have a test drive of it very soon uh, but the guy who's driving at the moment absolutely adores it. He drives 20 miles to work and back every day. He never uses any petrol to do that journey because that's the range it's got, about 20-25 miles on the charge. So uh, it looks like your standard BMW. It, apparently it goes like stink, which is an important thing for BMW drivers, and it costs 380 pounds a month. So this is the Nissan ENV 200 pure electric van. It's a brilliant van, I've driven one of these, they're really good. Uh, the list price is 27,850, but you can lease it. Now generally, of course, a van like this, a delivery van, is gonna be leased by a company, not a private individual. And you can get this lease from between two 200 and 250 pounds a month depending on how many miles you do in it so a lot and these are really popular with businesses these are really they're flying off the lot as they say in car trade circles so that is a really really cheap van if you're running a business and you've got to make deliveries 250 quid a month with virtually zero fuel costs it makes an enormous amount of sense Whereas this is the Nissan ENV 200 combi van. Now this is essentially a little minibus. It, has, uh, it can have three rows of seats, got loads of storage in the back if you need it. Uh, this one costs 29,500 to buy, that's the list price, but you can rent it, lease it, not rent it, shouldn't say rent, that's a house. You lease a car for £320 a month. Now, as I said at the top of the show, it's very important to get proper, sensible advice. I'm giving a vague overview of what the cost of leasing vehicles is. It's, it's you know, it, you cannot trust me. I'm not a reliable source of actual financial information. Anyone who's watched many episodes of Fully Charged will know that maths and numbers are not my strong point. And actually, I've been told about this organisation today, which I think sounds very good, which is the British Vehicle Rental and Leasing Leasing Association, the BVRLA. It's worth Googling that and checking that because they are a very, very reliable, uh, independent source of information about vehicle leasing companies. Now, this, all these vehicles have been arranged uh, for us today by uh, Drive Electric, which is a vehicle leasing company that I lease my Tesla from. And they've been extremely helpful in doing this. This is not an advert because they're not paying me to do it, but they have helped. So it's very important that I'm very transparent about this because we could not have arranged to get all these cars here today. Importantly as well, there isn't a Nissan Leaf or a Renault Zoe in this display simply because those have all been leased. They're not here. They haven't got them on their books. They're all out with their customers. So, you know, that's why they're not here today. And we'll obviously put the price of a Nissan Leaf and a Renault Zoe in the show. But uh, it's very important that you check out, if you're going to lease a car, to, to go with a reliable, decent company. And I can honestly say from experience that Drive Electric are an honest and decent company. And they lease, I lease my Tesla from them, and they're doing very well out of it. Because let me tell you, leasing the Tesla is not the cheap option. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the last few years, there's been obviously a very big difference between electric vehicles and traditional old fashioned vehicles in that there's a very limited second hand market. I mean, it's fairly obvious why, because there's very few electric cars around. There's, there was even less second hand cars around. Well, that has really changed really in the last last year or so, there's been a 600% increase in the availability of second-hand electric cars. The Nissan Leaf, for example, has been around for over five years now. There's lots and lots of them available second-hand, some real bargains around. Same for the Renault Zoe, same for the, the BMW i3. They're all starting to come into the second-hand market. Obviously, the same caveat suppliers I talked about with the leased vehicles. You know, if you're buying from a private owner, you need to get it checked out by a professional, as you would with any car. But one of the worries that a lot of people have is with the batteries. And there is one important thing you must remember and this particularly applies to the Renault Zoe if you're buying a second-hand Renault Zoe you really don't want to buy one with a battery lease which is how the Renault Zoe was originally sold and you can also have Nissan Leafs with uh, leased batteries I just I've never been a fan of the leased battery option but I think it was some sort of early fear by car manufacturers that oh they won't buy the, ba the, the car because they are worried about the battery no we now know batteries last an incredible long time you've got to check out the the, the Nissan Leaf taxi used by CNC taxis in Cornwall which has now done 150,000 miles on its original battery constantly using rapid chargers and it's lost 10% of its total capacity which is very very little over that time I mean it's amazing how long these batteries last so if you're buying a, an electric car that's done say 20 or 30,000 miles honestly seriously the battery isn't your main worry what about tires no one ever goes on about tires I've had to spend far more on tires on the Nissan Leaf than I have on replacing batteries I wouldn't dream of replacing the battery and that's partly because I punctured two of the tires and one of those times really was my fault because I drove over a nail I'd left in the drive that was banged through a piece of wood and I drove over it. So really I can't blame anyone. But tyres wear out, batteries don't. Now a really good place to look for second-hand electric cars is ecocars.net. Not only do they have a range of electric vehicles, second-hand electric vehicles on their, on their books, but they'll even deliver them to your house, which is really cool. Now, I'm not being sponsored or paid by ecocars.net. It's just that I know the people who run it and they're really good people. They really know their electric cars well. They drive electric cars all over the place, so they kind of understand the market. They'll not only sell you the car, but they'll explain to you the best way of using it and how to use it and all those things, which is really important. Uh, so it's just the same as uh, Drive Electric, who are also very good people, but I'm not being sponsored by them. I just want to make that very, very clear. And I just want to encourage you to look at the second-hand car market if you can't afford to buy a new car, which most sensible people can't. There we go. That's all we've got time for. Um, please have a look at the Patreon link uh, below this video. And if you want to support Fully Charged on Patreon, that would be peachy because it really does help us make more shows. We're going to try and produce more shows in the future, like more than one a week. And uh, if you please do subscribe to Fully Charged because there's going to be lots and lots of new episodes coming. And I wouldn't want you to miss their organic, tasty goodness. And if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>